James Skellington from uh, Force 24. You've just uh, spoken here at the Swiss Innovation Day. Thanks for joining us. Oh, absolute pleasure. Your topic was about the future of automation marketing, correct? Yes. So based on your, what you're talking about, tell us some of the challenges and the complexities that are faced by businesses today, especially in relation to a personalized customer experience. Cool. Um, I suppose really the Nowadays, communications go out free, free and easy, um, and often it's it's on mass. You know, and what we call a, a batch and blast methodology, specifically with an email. You know, you create something, you send it to everybody. Yet, inevitably, it's it's not always right for everybody. Um, so, what we're we're trying to provide people with is the the tools and the learning, the education, uh, to to empower them to speak to one on one communication or send one on one communications on mass. Um, inevitably, what we we tend to hear is that marketeers are spread thin, in, uh, wear multiple hats in the business and, and often encumbered by manual process. Uh, so this is really about trying to take the, the laborious elements out of uh, data segmentation uh, and kind of trying to create a, a more agile uh, and creative tool and, and right. environment where they can communicate with audiences. Yeah, great. I, I watched your presentation briefly for a few minutes and I noticed there was a slide where you spoke about the, um, I guess, the, the most prevalent times when you should should be approaching your customers, whether the, whether they've made the booking or not. In one big example that you used was that this person made a booking for their family for a holiday and there was a lull period where they were still working, they were still essentially paying the holiday off and they didn't really want to be contacted by the, the, the resort or wherever it was they were staying, mm. selling them other activities or, or promotions. In theory, that sounds great and very easy, but how would a hotel best be able to identify those periods with every booker so that they knew, knew when to target them at the right time? That, that's a really good question. I suppose there's, there's no one size fits all for this. Uh, it's very much a collaborative experience to identify what does your customer journey look like. Um, from a, a generic point though, what I would say is that once I've booked a holiday, for me to then start receiving offers or emails or, you know, for example, I've just spent £5,000 to, to, to go somewhere across the world for a once in a lifetime holiday. Obviously, the offers that come out are falling on deaf ears. It makes me feel like I'm not understood as a customer. So what we can do there is to exclude from things like PPC and, and from generic email comms it starts to then make sure that they're not seeing things that are relevant to them. It also means that as a business, we're not paying five pounds for a click when somebody's trying to find the customer service number. They'd find that information anywhere. So a bit of budget utilization there. Then what we start to see is that as we get closer to, to, to the event, once the holiday is paid off and so forth, um, we can start to ramp up excitement and start to share not only uh, insight pieces around the, the location, you know, just not everything has to be a sell. We're, uh, we're looking to add value at every, every possible term. Uh, but also, if we were looking at families, we might start talking about dining plans, we might start talking about family excursions that are out there um, and give people that opportunity. But once you've made a, a big outlay, you know, you have to go back to the real world and, mm -hmm. then, and, and then start to pay off. But as, as we get close to the, the date of departure, that's when we can really start talking to people about adding value and, and building excitement. Yeah. I noticed in your bio as well uh, that there was, you, you have this belief that uh, people make technology valuable. Could you explain that to me, why you feel that way? Yeah, so uh, I suppose from our own experience, the Force 24 was actually set up off the back of, um, I suppose 10, in 2010, primarily American platforms were hitting British shores. You know, fantastic pieces of kit, and then they still are today. But the fact is it was taking 18 months to install, uh, and once it was up, you needed two or three people working full time to get the most out of it. And then the service, all the providers were in America. So you either had to go to, to forums or you had to start tickets and wait two weeks for a response. And that's not really the way this should be. For marketing automation is about agility, about speed, and taking out the manual processes. Um, so when we talk about Force 24, we, we often refer to it as, it's a hammer. You know, this is, this is a tool, and in the right hands you can create beautiful things. It can be, still be damaging in the wrong hands. Yeah. So we believe in providing a, a, a handheld service where we provide free training and support with every account, and that is to empower you as a marketeer to get the most out of this tool, because Otherwise, it's, 
it's just another thing that you have to use. Yeah. Um, and hopefully what we see over time is, you know, very intensive training periods in the earlier set days, but then as you become more, uh, more self capable, uh, you, you transition that in house. But again, you know, it's about making sure that you can use this tool to its full extent. Mm -hmm. Great, excellent. James, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Really appreciate your time. Thank you.